Hey guys, it's May May, and look at what we are making today. It's a little mailbox. Nyoka Smith, who is on my design team, sent me a challenge video, which was so cool. She sent me a video and she said, can you figure out how to make this for those of us that don't have a Cricut or an electronic cutting machine and make a mailbox? The trick is the curve, right? That's where the problem comes in, is the getting this curve. So here's what I thought. Let's just supersede the curve. <laughs> Let's just let it go and just make a little pull out treat box that looks like a mailbox when it's sitting down, right? I think this works. I think it gets the same look as a mailbox without having to figure out the curve and all that fiddly gluing. So let me show you how I did it. The first thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper that measures 10 inch by eight and a half. So basically it's an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that we're taking one inch off. But don't get rid of this because we're gonna use it. This whole piece of paper will be utilized for this project. Now it's time to score the paper. Now I put the paper into the scoreboard with the long part at the top and we're gonna score it in two places, at three inches and at seven inches. Okay. Now we're gonna turn it in our scoreboard and we're gonna score it at three and at five and a half. This is a very simple box to make. I tried to make it really, really easy because I wanted the impact, the big impact of the mailbox, but I didn't want all the work. So now you're going to take your scissors. Now I'm going to use my Tim Holtz scissors, which I usually don't recommend for this, but the reason I like them is because I like this long cut area. You can use any old scissors for this. But now we're going to cut two of the scored lines on two sides of the page. So the long side of the page, we're cutting the scored lines down to where they intersect at that next score line, okay? And then on the opposite side, you're going to do the same thing. So just these two score lines, this one, and also this one. Okay, now before we do anything else, I want to score all of these folds. So now I'm just gonna start folding these pages over and scoring. And you wanna burnish these really well. For this box, I found that the tighter the burnish is, the better. Sometimes I don't say that you have to burnish boxes really hard because remember you're just doing a 90 degree angle. But when I was playing with this one, I felt like the tighter my score mark was or my fold was, the better it held together or held the shape of that uh, mailbox. All right, so there's those and then we'll fold it up. Now you can, uh, you can of course score this before you do the cuts. But for me, I like to do that. I like to do my cuts when the page is just nice and flat. All right, so now we're ready to assemble the box portion. Now we're gonna add our adhesive. We're gonna use these flaps that we cut at the edge to, steal, to seal this guy down. You wanna run your adhesive along the top portion of the flap and then also this portion of the flap. The reason for that is the way this box is gonna go together, these are the two best places to put the adhesive when we seal the box shut. It'll make more sense when I get to that point, but again, you're gonna put it on the top of the flap so the top of the flap here, and then the outside here. And just do that on all four of these little flaps. If you're using liquid adhesive, this part doesn't matter so much. And for me, I just thought I got a better closure when I put my adhesive in these two spots. All right, so I've peeled the backer off of my adhesive, and now we're gonna work with two, um, with two flaps at one time. So basically, we're gonna bring this up, okay? We're gonna line up this edge right here on the side, and then seal that shut. So really the only place I'm concerned about lining up is the outside edge and the top will just do its thing. Now the way we put that adhesive on, we sealed the top and we sealed the side of those flaps. That's what we were looking for. So the top and the side. Again, liquid adhesive, no big deal. Just put your liquid adhesive all over. Now this time we're gonna bring these guys in, stand it up, line up those edges of the box again, and then seal that into place. And on the other side, do the same, line up the edge and then seal it into place. So now we have the slider box created. That's what's gonna slide inside our mailbox. Now we need to create the flap that makes it look like a mailbox. For the flap, you're gonna need two pieces of paper. Your first one is gonna be four inches by 12 inches. Now what's so cool about this is you can get three of these from one 12 by 12 piece of paper with zero waste. I love that idea. So that's the first strip you need. This, now this piece I cut from an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that was in a Christmas pack that I bought from the clearance rack. There's nothing Christmas on here. It looks very Valentine-y, right? This one is nine and one quarter inch tall by three and three quarters inches wide. So that's gonna be the mailbox portion itself. 
So we have a little bit more scoring to do. We're gonna score this piece that we cut to be the mailbox flap, the 12 inch piece, at two and a half inches, and then at 11 and three quarters, basically leaving ourselves a quarter of an inch flap here at the bottom. While we're working with this piece, let's go ahead and do the scoring. I'm gonna fold up this little quarter inch flap here at the bottom and crease it with my bone folder. And then I'm gonna fold up this section and crease it with the bone folder. Now, to put this guy together, we're gonna use that same sticky tape and I think I told you this is the sticky tape I sell in my store. I'm not sure if I said that, but that's what this one is. And this is available in the store. I'll put links to everything for you. Now I'm gonna take this flap that has the adhesive on it and bring the other piece to it. Notice this is the piece we scored, but we're not going to crease this top. We're just gonna bring it to it and let it kind of, kind of bend. That's what we're looking for is a nice tunnel shaped bend. See that? Works pretty cool, doesn't it? All right, now we can put this piece around this piece. And what I did was I used some wet glue. I found that the wet glue made this portion real easy, but you don't have to do the wet glue. You can use your sticky tape. I put the glue at the top, down the middle, and at the bottom of this piece, and I'll show you how I attached it. Starting at one end, I just lined up the bottom edge. This is why I liked the wet glue, because it gave me a split second to move it around and get it into place. So we just line this up at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm just gonna wrap it around and let it stick to the other side. So now we have the body of our mailbox made. How cute, huh? Let's put the little drawer back inside real quick. It just slides in just like this. And at first you might think, well, that doesn't look a whole lot like a mailbox, but when we add this little flag and our sentiment, it really starts to come together. So now for the flag and the sentiment, here's what we do. Remember that piece I told you not to throw away? This is that piece that came off of the box we made for the mailbox. We're gonna fold this piece in half and seal it shut. The reason I'm doing this is because my cardstock is not really sturdy enough to hold the flag in place, but when I double it over and seal it shut with some glue, it's plenty, plenty sturdy. So now we just made that double thick and it'll hold our flag. For my flag, I'm using two pieces of paper. I'm using a white piece and a little red, red piece. This piece is two and a half inches long by one and a half inch tall. And this little white piece is two and one quarter by one and one quarter. Now I'm gonna stamp a sentiment. We gotta have a sentiment. For my sentiment today, I'm using from my sweet stuff stamp set. I think this is super cute for Valentine's with all the candy and the sweet treat sentiments. And I'm gonna use the one that says sweet stuff. I used that on the last one too. I thought it was super cute. So I'm just gonna put that on, put that onto my block. More fancy finger work today. And then we can ink it up. Now I put my sentiment off to the side, just like this. And then I'm gonna put another little stamp here. I'm gonna use one of the little candies from the set, which I think are cute. This is like a little twisted candy. It's so precious. I'm just gonna stamp him right down here just like that, a little sweet candy. There's more candies on the set. You could put a whole bunch more if you wanted to. And then I'm gonna glue this guy down. Now I have another tip for you really quick. Notice this is a white piece of paper. When I cut the strip to go over my mailbox, I went ahead and flipped it over and used the back side of a piece for my sentiment. I was gonna have a scrap anyway, and that's just a good way to know that I'm using my scraps and not just throwing that into a drawer and never using it again. So that's just a tip. That's just a freebie. <laughs> They're all free. They're on YouTube and they're free. Okay, so there's my flag. You could round the corners and do all that fancy stuff if you'd like, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to make a simple flag. Now I'm going to glue this guy right here. This is so easy. Your kids could help you make this for their class and they would have a ball making these. They're super easy. They could even put the mailbox together probably without any help. There's our flag. Let's put it on our mailbox. Now you have a couple of options here. You could certainly put a brad on this little guy so that your flag can move up and down, but I'm not even gonna do that. I'm thinking, like when my kids were little and I was making Valentine's for kids in class, that we were always rushed for time in my house and this makes it go super fast. But please, get as fancy as you like. I think it'd be super cute if you had a little brad and it would slide up and down. You could certainly do that. So I've just glued this guy in place, but I do wanna put a cute little something right there just to make that look precious. 
So I have this little bitty punch that is so cute. It's from EK Success and it's a little flower. I'm just gonna punch this out and use it there. Can you imagine how much fun your kids would have going through your punches and making little things for their mailboxes? It would be cute. And then I'm gonna put a little glue on it and put it right here as if it were the screw that we're holding our flag on. <laughs> Super cute, huh? How easy is that? Couldn't you make a bunch of these for your kids' class? I think this would be super easy. I hope I met the challenge that Nioka had for me. Make a mailbox without a cut file, without the fancy stuff, and to get the job done. Here's one. Let's look at the other one, which I think is cute, too. One is red. You know, this is more my color scheme, right? And then here's the pink color scheme, which I think is precious. Hey, let me know if you guys recreate these. If you do, share them with us on our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. We would love to see what you guys come up with your little mailboxes. I look forward to seeing what you do. I will have a blog post link below with supplies for everything I used for you to be able to go and get anything that you need to make these guys too, as well as all of the dimensions that will be listed in the blog post. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.